Hello and welcome to laranara.com and today we're going to talk about diabetes 1 and 2 and we're going to show you some amazing research into diabetes and I think after you've watched this video you're going to have a totally different and new perspective on diabetes. You're going to understand that it can be cured contrary to common beliefs that it is a chronic disease that you cannot get rid of but just uh, manage the symptoms by taking insulin and so forth. But as you will see in this video, this is maybe not the complete and utter truth. And uh, if you haven't watched it yet, we also brought out a video on a so-called diabetes free that is uh, caused by electromagnetic sensitivity. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend it. Uh, go onto our YouTube channel and you will find it there. Uh, but today we're going to talk about the most common types of diabetes called type 1 and type 2. We're going to explain exactly what is happening in your body and of course show you natural cures for it. So without further ado, let's learn more about diabetes. And as you can see from this great infograph, we need to talk about diabetes because it is definitely on the rise. It has become a kind of an epidemic of our times. Uh, it's uh, related to many factors, our lifestyles, etc. But as you will see, not only. Um, and that's why it's so crucial to understand diabetes for millions of people who are affected by it and to find out what the real solutions are to this uh, debilitating condition. And that's what we're going to talk about in this presentation, therefore. So, if you have diabetes 1 or type 2, you've probably been told the following, that you have an incurable chronic disease, that you need to be treated with medications in order to keep your blood sugar under control, and that you need to follow the low glycemic index diet recommendations. But while only one out of every 250 diabetics uh, benefit uh, from uh, not requiring a limb amputation, one out of six di diabetics are hospitalized due to life-threatening hypoglycemia. Over 10 years, more than one out of every three diabetics following the tight glycemic control comes close to death due to the so-called hypoglycemia. According to an article by John McDougall, in a major study, a popular diabetic medication called Avandia, given at a dosage of 4 mg twice a day on average, decreased hemoglobin A1C levels by 1.5 percentage points, reduced fasting uh, plasma sugar by 76 mg per deciliter, and reduced insulin resistance by 25%. On May 21, 2007, the New York Times reported that patients uh, who were taking Avandia had a 66% chance of more heart attacks, 39% more strokes, and 20% more deaths uh, were recorded from cardiovascular-related problems from uh, people taking this drug. So the medications that are often promoted by mainstream medicine unfortunately have a lot of undesired side effects as you can see and this has been reported even by the mainstream media. So how does this theory of diabetes work out for us? Are we improving the diabetes health outcomes or the condition through the medications and drugs we recommend? Or is the progression of diabetes an all but inevitable decline into worsening symptoms, more and more medications and greater impairment of your health leading to an early death? And the answer is clearly that diabetics who are treated by or according to actual standard diabetes care procedures get worse, not better over time, unfortunately. What's less obvious, though, is that the treatments themselves contribute about as much to the declining health condition as the diabetes itself. Once you're diagnosed in our current uh, medical system, you're trapped in a place where there is no possibility of restoring your health 
or of an improved function or even a cure of your diabetes, unfortunately. And so uh, in this presentation, I'd like to offer a more hopeful and empowering uh, path that uh, not only we are able to manage the symptoms of diabetes, but we can reverse it. We don't have to remain dependent on toxic pharmaceuticals to do so, and we can be independent from mainstream medicine interventions of any kind. And if that sounds good to you, keep on listening. And the first thing we need to do is to answer the question, how do we get sick in the first place? And our body works as a complex electromagnetic system. The thoughts are electrical signals and emotions and feelings are also electromagnetic waves. So beliefs, habits and strong emotions are all stored in the subconscious brain. And when an unattended emotional shocking or traumatic event occurs, uh, edema or edemas appear on specific regions of your brain and the autonomous nervous system and hormonal system, uh, they both get impaired by wrong uh, central nervous system signals and thereby they disturb the autoregulation capability of your body and the biochemistry of your body. And in three to four years, if you do not take care of these uh, emotions, the corresponding organs or functions thereof are chronically impaired and uh, physiological changes and chronic degeneration will occur. Toxins and microbes also from the environment, the food, uh, the water, air, soil, as well as electrosmog, they also penetrate easier into your body when you are under stress and they disturb the by the cellular polarity and the cell communication within your body. The psycho-emotional and the epigenetic factors bring the body out of the so-called homeostasis, so balance, and the autonomous nervous system's autoregulation uh, capability does not function properly anymore. Therefore, the cells lose their polarity, the membrane potential is decreasing, and you eventually become chronically sick. And diabetes as an illness has to do with the state of your pancreas. So we need to talk therefore about pancreas disorders because diabetes is directly related to the pancreas's hormonal functions. The pancreas produces two major hormones called insulin and glucagon, both important for the cell's nutrition and the body energy because the glycolysis converts glucose into energy in your body. Embedded in the pancreas are cell clusters called the islets of Langerhans that play a significant role in the regulation of your blood sugar. And the alpha and beta islet cells originate from the endoderm, so the production of these two hormones is controlled by the diencephalon. The alpha islet cells are also controlled from the left side of the diencephalon, so the glucagon center, and the beta islet cells are controlled from the right side, which is also called the insulin center. And those two brain control centers are positioned exactly opposite of each other. So therefore, to cure diabetes 1 and 2, you have to establish a balanced insulin and glucagon production within your body. It is misleading to treat diabetes 1 or 2 just by treating the symptoms and to only concentrating on blood sugar values. To balance those two hormones, you must know which are the real causes that trigger the imbalance between insulin and glucagon and these stressors uh, first of a psycho-emotional nature as for all other diseases. Many times they are synergistically contributing to an insulin-glucagon imbalance and um, other physiological conditions such as liver and gallbladder malfunctions, kidney uh, that collect uh, tubal syndrome as well as pancreas infections or stones, they contribute to it as well. Pathogens and parasites also play a very important role in diabetes, as we will see. And here you can see the differences between diabetes 2 and diabetes 1, uh, which cells uh, are active or are out of balance. 
and the symptoms you need to look out for as well as the biological conflicts. So let's go uh, quickly over those. Diabetes 2, it has to do with your pancreas alpha cells. Uh, you will see hypoglycemia and the glucagon center is affected. So you will see reduced glucagon that um, is released into your body and the reduced glucose from the liver. Symptoms, of course, will be the reduced glucagon production, hypoglycemia, so the decrease of glucose in your blood. Uh, you will feel always hungry and you will also notice a weight gain. The biological conflicts that cause this are for women that are right-handed, separation conflicts, uh, uh, isolation or exclusion, hate, detestation, disgust, as well as anxiety. For men who are left-handed, it's resistance and defense conflict, opposition conflict, anxiety, as well as hostility. For diabetes 1, uh, we talk about the pancreas beta cells. You will see hyperglycemia and the insulin center is affected. So you will see reduced insulin um, that is released from the beta cells and an increased glucose in your blood. Symptoms, of course, the reduced insulin production, hyperglycemia, so accumulation of glucose in your blood, muscle weakness, uh, thirstiness to reduce the glucose in your blood, actually, as well as an impaired blood circulation. The biological conflicts behind this type of diabetes are for women who are left-handed, detestation, disgust, anxiety, and hate. And for right-handed men, separation conflicts, isolation, exclusion, hate, detestation, disgust, and anxiety. Okay, now that we understand this, let's go into a little bit more detail for each of the types of diabetes, starting with diabetes type 1. The psycho-emotional conflict linked to the beta islet cells is a male resistance conflict or a female fear disgust conflict depending on a person's gender, laterality as well as hormone status. A resistance conflict is a strong opposition against a person, so a parent, a step parent, sibling, relative, spouse, teacher, colleague, etc. against a situation at work, at home, in school, in your relationship, against an institution, the church, the government, hospital, political regime, etc., and against decisions made over one's head or being forced to do something against your will. Children suffer the conflict at a very early age and when they resist, for example, daycare, kindergarten, school, and when they strongly oppose what they are told to do or to eat. During the conflict active phase, the function of the beta islet cells is reduced, causing hyperglycemia, so high blood sugar, or diabetes. The biological purpose of storing glucose in your blood is to prepare the individual for the conflict resolution by providing the organism, particularly the muscles, with sufficient amounts of blood sugar in order to be able to fight with full force. The degree of hyperglycemia, or how much fuel is available, is determined by the extent of the conflict. For additional support, the liver also releases glucose, a process called gluconeogenesis. Biologically speaking, the active uh, fight is the distinctive male response to a resistance conflict, whereas the female reaction to a fear disgust conflict is backing off. Typical for type 1 diabetes is extreme thirst, as we've mentioned already, which serves the purpose of diluting the high blood sugar levels, just as the car craving for uh, sweets serves to balance the low glucose levels in case of hypoglycemia. And with lasting conflict duration, uh, diabetes becomes chronic, and this is also called insulin-dependent diabetes, and is uh, categorized as type 1 diabetes, also referred to as juvenile diabetes, since it apparently occurs predominantly in children and adolescents, where, whereby type 2 diabetes, um, as, um, contrary to this, is uh, also called adult onset diabetes. In this case, insulin therapies and dietary measures are vital until the conflict has been resolved. Whether diabetes occurs in the healing phase involving the alpha islet cells or in the conflict active phase 
relating to the beta islet cells is determined by the person's gender, laterality and hormone status rather than the person's age and hence the differentiation excuse me, between juvenile and adult onset diabetes which we think is quite meaningless. What about diabetes type 2 then? The biological conflict linked to the alpha islet cells is a female fear disgust conflict or a male resistance conflict depending on a person's gender, laterality and hormone status. A fear disgust conflict is a fright coupled with disgust regarding a situation or a person. The conflict can be brought on, for example, by revolting sexual experiences such as abuse, unwanted sexual practices, etc., or distress involving blood, feces, urine, and vomit. Being frightened of a drunk family member could provoke a fear disgust conflict with the smell of alcohol as a potential drag, and children suffer the conflict when they have to eat, for example, disgusting food. During the conflict active phase, the function of the alpha islet cells is reduced and the decrease of glucagon production causes hypoglycemia. Symptoms of hypoglycemia are nausea, dizziness, trembling, a flattering heartbeat due to the glucose deficiency in your muscles, including your heart muscle, of course. Typical for low blood sugar is a craving for sugar and sweets, which serves the purpose of balancing out the blood sugar levels. The steady overeating leads to weight gains uh, related more to water retention, which is due to kidney malfunctioning, also called diabetes insipidus. Because of the regular intake of sugar-rich foods, hypoglycemia uh, usually goes unnoticed. During the first period of the healing phase, the glucose level slowly rises to a normal level and in the second stage of the healing phase, the blood sugar level increases above normal range, showing the symptoms of diabetes. At the end of the healing phase, the blood sugar level goes back to normal. With continuous conflict relapses, diabetes 2 becomes then chronic and in this case, insulin is still produced but is not utilized for carrying glucose to the body and this is also known therefore as insulin resistance um, and is categorized as type 2 diabetes also referred to as adult onset diabetes. And you might have also heard about insulin resistance. So what is insulin resistance? Well, type 2 diabetes usually begins with so-called insulin resistance, a condition in which your muscles, the liver, as well as the fat cells do not use the insulin well. As a result, your pancreas produces more insulin to help glucose enter the cells, which are resistant to insulin. And over time, the pancreas gets exhausted and cannot produce enough insulin and the blood glucose levels are on the rise, therefore. If there is a single marker for lifespan, as they have been finding, finding out in uh, centenarian uh, studies, it is insulin high sensitivity. Insulin resistance is the basis of all chronic diseases of aging. If you ask your doctor about insulin's role, they will say that it's to lower the blood sugar. Insulin's evolutionary purpose is to store excess nutrients as fat, however. We are only here because our ancestors were able to store nutrients in form of fat and they were able to store nutrients because they were able to elevate their insulin levels in response to any request to elevate the energy levels that uh, the organism requested. What are the functions of insulin? Insulin is a vital hormone with many functions actually. It's an anabolic hormone, so bodybuilders, for example, are using insulin now. It has become legal and they are injecting themselves with insulin because it helps them build up muscle and store protein better too. A lesser known fact, however, is that insulin also stores magnesium. If your cells become resistant to insulin, you cannot store magnesium, so you lose it through urine. And uh, what is one of magnesium's major roles? Well, to relax your muscles. You lose magnesium and your muscles and blood vessels constrict, which in turn increases your blood pressure. 
and reduces the energy since the intracellular magnesium is required for all energy producing reactions to take place in your cells. But most importantly, magnesium is also necessary for the action of insulin and for the insulin production. So when you raise your insulin, you lose magnesium and the cells become even more insulin resistant. Blood vessels constrict, glucose and insulin can't get to the, your tissue and uh, this in turn makes them more insulin resistant. So the insulin levels go up and you lose even more magnesium and this is a vicious cycle that goes on from before you were born. Insulin sensitivity is going to start uh, being determined from the moment the sperm uh, combines with the egg. If your mother, for example, while you were in the womb, was eating a high carbohydrate diet, which uh, is turning into sugar, we have been able to show in studies that the fetus in animals uh, becomes more insulin resistant. Worse yet, we were also able to use sophisticated measurements in studies and show that if that fetus happens to be a female, they find that the eggs of that fetus are also more insulin resistant. Insulin also causes the retention of sodium, which in turn causes the retention of fluids, which causes in turn high blood pressure and fluid retention, which means you get a congestive heart and may suffer from heart failure as a result. And one of the strongest stimulants of the sympathetic nervous system is also high levels of insulin. What does all of this have to do with your heart? Well, not very good things if you are in a permanent stress state, as you can imagine. Your cells also become insulin resistant because they are trying to protect themselves from the toxic effects of high insulin. They um, regulate the receptor activity down and the number of receptors also so that they don't have to listen to that noxious stimuli all the time. It is like having loud, disgusting music played and you want to turn the volume down. Insulin stimulates uh, cells to divide also. In all of the cells um, are resistant to insulin, we wouldn't have that much of a problem. But the problem is that all of the cells don't become resistant. The liver becomes resistant first, then your muscle tissue, and then the fat. And when the liver becomes resistant, insulin suppresses its production of sugar. And when you wake up in the morning, it is a reflection of how much sugar your liver has produced. If your liver is listening to insulin properly, it won't make, make uh, much sugar in the middle of the night. If your liver is resistant, those brakes are lifted and your liver starts making a bunch of uh, sugar, so you wake up with a bunch of sugar in your system. The next tissue to become resistant is your muscle tissue and insulin allows your muscles to burn sugar. So if your muscles become resistant to insulin, it cannot burn that sugar that was manufactured by the liver for them. And so the liver is producing again too much sugar, the muscles cannot burn it and this raises in turn your blood sugar. Insulin also increases cellular proliferation and this means it increases your cancer risks. Fat cells also become resistant, but not in the first place. It is only after a while that they become resistant. It takes them longer to do so. Liver first, muscle second, and then third, your fat cells. So for a while, your fat cells will retain their sensitivity. But as people become more and more insulin resistant, their weight goes up and eventually they plateau. All of these major tissues become resistant, your liver, your muscles and your fat. And your pancreas is putting out more insulin to compensate so you are hyperinsulinemic. And you've got insulin floating around all the time, 90 units or even more. But there are certain tissues that are becoming resistant to, to insulin, such as your endothelium, the lining tissue of all of your major organs and vessels, such as your arteries. We also have to talk about the relationship between diabetes and parasites. For decades, many doctors and biologists studied the mutual interactions between diabetes and parasites, viruses and bacteria, 
and you may make one simple experiment at your end to verify this if you have a type 1 or 2 diabetes and you catch the flu um, you may get an antibiotic from your physician or a herbal antiviral tincture you measure your blood sugar during this therapy and you will see how your blood glucose goes back to normal values without any drugs or extra insulin just by treating the infection and therefore the question arises treating an infection does also treat diabetes Halder Clark had the following to say about diabetes all diabetics have a common parasite known as urethrema pancreaticum the pancreatic fluke and humans get it uh, from cattle meat or dairy um, that is consumed especially in a raw state and this fluke is activated in your body under the influence of methanol found in processed food bottled water artificial sweetener soda pops baby formulas powder drinks and many more and uh, methanol toxicity has been proven beyond doubt host parasites such as uh, enteroparasites like uh, G. lamblia or A. lumbricoides interact uh, also um, the interaction triggers uh, many diabetes complications in diabetic patients and they are really common amongst uh, diabetes 2 patients and a high frequency of protozoa and helminths was also found in diabetes 2 patients and uh, they are therefore supposed to be a real trigger of diabetes as well. There is also a very interesting relationship between microbes and diabetes that has been discovered. The intense infections in diabetic patients are due to the hyperglycemia that favors immune dysfunction such as damages to the neutrophil depression of antioxidants, depressed humoral immunity, micro as well as macro angiopathies, decrease in the antibacterial activity of the urine, gastrointestinal as well as urinary dysmotility, malign external otitis, rhinocerebral mucomycosis, gangrenous cholecystitis, pneumococcal infections, uh, pyelonephritis, fungal cystitis, um, perinephric abscesses, um, gastrointestinal as well as liver infections and oral and esophageal candidiasis, hepatitis B and C, head and neck infections, uh, periodontitis, HIV, herpes and many more. Uh, more prevalent are infections in diabetes mellitus patients because the hyperglycemic environment increases the virulence of the pathogens, it lowers interleukin production and it reduces the phagocytosis as well as the chemotaxis which means it reduces the immune response of your body. Also viruses like the enteroviruses 68 to 71, ecoviruses, polioviruses as well as Coxsackie viruses and flu viruses they can all trigger and even worsen diabetes 1 and 2 as can do an unhealthy lifestyle nutrition with too many carbohydrates and grains unhealthy processed food being overweight all of those factors ignite the virulent potential of the above mentioned viruses and those all together lead to diabetes as the University of Munich and the Helmholtz Institute in Germany have found out. Helicobacter pylori is also a very common worldwide infection with the gastrointestinal complications one of which is diabetes and insulin resistance. It has been found out that over 55% of diabetes 2 patients are also infected with this type of bacteria. And a research group at the UI Carver College of Medicine uh, found out that prolonged exposure to a toxin that is produced by the so-called Staphylococcus aureus bacteria can cause diabetes 2, insulin resistance as well as systemic inflammation. So any therapy therefore that is uh, trying to eliminate the staph bacteria has also real potential for preventing and treating diabetes type 2. 
As people gain weight, they are also increasingly likely to be colonized by this staph bacteria with very strong skin reactions and uh, applying, therefore, uh, glycerol monolaurate uh, on the skin topically it will kill this staph bacteria and will improve the health condition of these diabetic patients. Okay, now that you better understand what is going on in your body, how this uh, insulin and everything works together, how parasites uh, can affect you, uh, etc., and emotional stress, of course, let's talk about solutions, natural solutions that are side effect free. What are the supplements and remedies that we recommend? Well, chrome picolinate and vanadyl to increase the number of insulin receptors is great. Vitamin D3 together with K2 to signal the body that is not in hibernation with low metabolism. L-carnitine and taurine which both activate the mitochondria respiration and the glucose conversion to ATM energy. Grapeseed extract also known as OPC to open up your capillaries. Coenzyme Q10, also ubiquinol, uh, to activate uh, your blood circulation. Vitamin C, as vitamin C has the same structure as glucose, so having enough vitamin C signals no need for glucose in your body. Natokinase is great to thin the blood and to secure a better blood circulation. Magnesium, 1000 milligrams per day to assist the enzymatic process that we talked about. Quercetin is great, as well as MSM and alpha-lipoic acid. And there are also some great uh, DMSO-based remedies on, uh, that you can get exclusively at lyranara.me. We have the herbeso diabetes well, herbeso pancreas well, as well as the herbeso gangrene cure, which I'm all going to post the links for in the description box below for you. And there are also some amazing holistic devices uh, available to treat diabetes and also to test for diabetes, for organ testing, for pathogens, etc. Uh, on the left uh, upper part, you can see the Vistron, which is great for testing as well as for treatment. Um, then um, next to it, you see the Aquaturn Professional, also an awesome treatment device. Uh, energetical treatment devices, all of those are, works wonders and is very easy to use. You can even use it at home. Um, on the bottom left corner, you see the Kindling Easy, which will help you with your auto regulation capabilities. And by the way, the Kindling Easy is also right now on sale. You get an amazing discount if you purchase it uh, within the next few weeks at laronara.com. And also, uh, very, very uh, good results can be achieved with a so-called galvanic therapy devices, such as the Veget Balance Home that you can see in the middle of the bottom row, and the Therapro, which is the professional version of it. Galvanic uh, therapy has been proven to work even for cancer, and uh, all of the most common conditions, including diabetes, so all of these devices, you can purchase them uh, exclusively at laronara.com. Links are going to be, as always, in the description box below. They all have been proven many times over, over the years, and they work a treat. Okay, time to wrap it all up and sum up what we've learned today. We've learned that there is a cure for diabetes, but it is only possible to cure diabetes if we identify the causes correctly first. It's definitely not going to be a simple therapy because the type 1 and type 2 diabetes, as you've seen, are very complex health conditions and they depend on many factors such as the duration and the intensity of the biological conflict, your gender, the, your age, etc., etc. In tactical discussions um, with the patients, first try to help to them to resolve their psycho-emotional conflict, so enable the patient to reduce this uh, anxiety, disgust, uh, the defense mechanisms going on, the separation conflicts, self-detestation, isolation. Try to help them regain self-esteem and freedom again. 
there is definitely no miracle pill or non plus ultra diet or fitness program that you can follow to cure diabetes you must uh, regain full control of your life and you must address it holistically so you must work on the psychological level as well as on the physical level during the therapy you always have to pay attention to hypoglycemia and avoid it because this is definitely a very short pathway to death with 150 milligrams or 500 milligrams per deciliter glucose you will survive but with a hypoglycemic shock you will die so sometimes a discussion about a psycho-emotional conflict can trigger high glucose in the blood because the conflict the evaluation acts as a relapsing factor. Careful with that. Check uh, also the liver, the gallbladder, the kidneys, the pancreas, the physiology, uh, as well as treat parasites, viruses and bacterial infections. Certainly you can also use uh, temporary different preparations or insulin or low carb diets or fasting or fitness programs to reduce insulin up to a certain level but only when you also resolve the conflict the diabetes one or two can go completely and can be cured completely so it's all about a holistic approach and to support your diabetes, you saw that we recommend also some great uh, supplements and remedies. Um, as I said, a great herbaceo products specifically designed for pancreas and diabetes conditions uh, can be had exclusively at laranara.me. Links in the description box below. Uh, as you've seen, there are also some great holistic treatment devices, energetical treatment devices, as well as diagnosis tools like the Kindling Easy, the Vistron, and Calvanic therapy devices such as the Veget Balance Therapro. You can also get those devices uh, exclusively at Lana.com. Links also in the description box below. And with that being said, I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. Uh, if you did so, please do not forget to like, share, subscribe, hit also the notifications button so you get um, informed whenever we put a new video out, which is weekly, at least once. And uh, until next time, stay healthy.